Charlie Parsons, the stomping ground live on the zone. Mr. Shane McGuigan, Ellie Scottney, she does it again. They got the ring magazine added late, so she's got that as well, which sits, oh, it's no longer there, but. Yeah, uh, managed to get it off Ricky Hatton as well. So that's uh, wow. Billy Graham to, to walk her out. And obviously, uh, yeah, Ricky to lend it. I think he won it against Costa Zoo in the same arena. So it's a pretty, uh, she said she didn't want to give it back, but we'll see. She's so good, isn't she? And once again, proving that tonight. One of the school cards, a bit questionable. Yeah, I thought that was a bit dubious, but, um, you know, it depends. Like, um, the French girl was throwing a lot of punches, so, you know, you could see where the rounds could be close, but the telling shots were, were landing with, um, with, with Ellie, and she was, you know, domineering the fight, I think, setting the pace as well, so... Really happy, really excited about that performance. I thought, I thought it was amazing. I think she's had a couple of performances in her career where she didn't quite really set set the stage alight, and maybe left it in the gym. She trains very, very hard, but today she just she's just uh, got a punch perfect performance, I believe. Do you think sometimes it's a, a matter of sort of rising against the best opposition as such, and yeah, in definitely. those sort of learning fights, you sometimes not that you can't get yourself up for it as such, but when you've got yeah. someone who's going to make you fight, you get a different level out of you. Yeah, I mean like. I think every single person she's, she's fought, if she'd have sparred them, she'd have just really dominated the spars. Uh, and she's made certain certain fights hard. But as you said, yeah, it's, it's, she gave that girl a lot of respect, her being a, a world champion, obviously for the ring magazine belt as well, almost like the number one spot. So she knew she had to perform and, and that pressure really uh, was a privilege for her. Everyone keeps saying, and Eddie and himself rode to Undisputed, and that is yeah. the full intent now? Yeah, we, we were... I mean, Mikado was supposed to be boxing Erica Cruz for you know for okay. uni unification, um, and then we were going to do the undisputed. It was kind of hopefully going to be a box offs almost. Um, but if if they haven't made that fight, then she might have to go Mikado or Cruz, and then and then on. But um, it's also a lot of fights up there at featherweight as well. I mean, I know she wants to do the undisputed down at Super Bantam, but I think. You know, she's big for the weight and she's been here a long time and I just believe there's a couple of massive fights and, you know, a couple of big fights like, like Serrano there, she's got Sky Nicholson as well, um, a lot of respect there but she's won a world title so there's lots and lots of options out there, we just need to go and address uh, what's, what's the next step. Next for her, is it a bit of time off, chill and then get, get her back in the gym? I think she's a bit of a gym rat though, right? She oh, loves being she just in loves it. She just yeah. asked me then and I said, oh, you're not coming back in until June. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she won't like that. No, nah, but I mean, she's going to go on holiday. I think it's her mum's birthday next week. So um, she might be going away next week um, or the week after and then let that swelling, uh, in, I mean, you're going to see in a couple of se a couple of minutes of swelling on her head. She did a head clash, I think about the fifth or sixth round and her head blew up. So um, she needs time to rest, but she's a gym rat and she's, um, she's, she's been in the gym now about two and a half years and she's She's really making some good progression, so I'm really, I'm really pleased with it. Any updates on Azim Eubank? Looking like potentially July, okay. end of June, July. So, um, yeah, we're in talks at the moment, so hopefully hopefully we can get a, a date and out soon and maybe a couple of weeks' time we'll, we'll do a big press conference. Just on the rest of the uh, schedule, um, this will come out tomorrow. We're seeing the 5v5 announced. Yeah. Not going to tempt fate or anything. We semi expect Craig to be out. I don't want to put you under it, so yeah. whether he is or isn't, but looking yeah. forward to having him back out again and, and in yeah. some big clashes. Yeah, I think you know he is. Um, he is going to be boxing on the on, you know in June. So uh, <laughs> either way, whether it's in the five by five or if it's in another one, so we'll see. But uh, there should be a big announcement soon. But either way, I think like I'm really I'm really excited about Craig. I think Craig's gonna be you know, I mean not to disrespect the training he was doing before, but I just I, I genuinely believe that the best years are, are ahead of him and you know he's he's in a he's in a real winning environment, getting really good sparring. Um and I'm excited. You know, you got the un undisputed fight between Bivol and Baturbiev soon, but you've got so many good domestic clashes between um like God, Watson, loads, Yard yeah. and then even if one of them vacated a belt and we could we could get keep winning and by the end of the year you could potentially be fighting for a for a vacant belt maybe even against a brick just uh, two more from me that man over there chris billam smith yeah react paul yeah looks like crystal palace stadium potentially yeah we st actually that's one thing that's that's genuinely not set we're still we're okay. still uh, figuring out the venue so um and also you know dates and like you know we understand that it's a big fight it's a very it's a very big fight within the trade because people are excited about it but obviously you know to sell like to go and sell out 
the stadium, it has to have a, a stacked mm. undercard. So they're still contemplating what they're going to do with it, okay. and um, hopefully we can have an announcement soon. Uh, finally from me, we saw Tyson Fury stage a press conference this week, just gone. Without uh, Usyk? You can't take, yes, you can't take too much mm. from it. It seemed like a, a good thing just to build confidence, really. Mm. Uh, what did you make of it all, and how do you assess that fight going into May 18th? Didn't see much. I saw snippets of the press conference, and you know he did his usual thing. He just dismissed it like, I'm going to go knock him out early. But what I would say is he looks like he's trained. Like mm. He looks like he's chiseled up around the face and I think he had to do that there were certain fights where he could have kept a bit of weight on him but you know, like for instance against Wilder Wilder was naturally quite thin but he doesn't have a high output um, and that was good for him to keep a bit of weight on because he could nullify him and use his strength but with Usyk he just doesn't do that he's a, he's a slickster I think they've done the right decision to sort of take some weight off him because he's going to have to match him for, for footwork and speed and I think it's a really exciting fight I'm really really excited about it I don't think it's going to be one of them ones where it's like we walk away from it being like oh so Gatty Ward but yeah. from a skill aspect I'm oh, really from excited from a purist point yeah. of view yeah prediction if I had to push you for <laughs> um, on recent form Usyk Ooh. but size strength how he can sap him no one sapped him yet Derek Chisori did the, was the closest person to sort of like physically impose himself and he did that early and then Usyk adjusted so I don't know. I think it's going to be points. I think it's going to be very close on points. And it, you know, I'm not going to sit on the fence. I, I have to say, I think like he might nick it. You sick? Well, Shane, top man. Thank you for speaking to Cheers, us. Mate. Stomping go.